This does, this is straight up a Twilight Zone episode. 100%. Like, just like, even not, even before we get to the ending, which I, I, I thought of this, like, as we're watching, I'm like, this is basically like a Twilight Zone episode. Except it would probably end with him being like dragged to a room into a sane asylum, and, and that's how it would end, you know, uh, versus what we do get in the ending. But yeah, oh my God, Socrates. I wrote down here, the editing continues to play with your mind. It is obvious that it is intentional the way Thelma is cutting things together if you're paying attention. David, I want to talk about that interrogation scene with that lady that Ruffalo and Leo do. You know what I'm talking about? The one with the glass that's not in her hand. <laughs> you might explain to the audience what, what that scene is and uh, what we noticed when you were watching it. Yeah, so there's this scene where Mark Ruffalo and... Uh, DiCaprio are sitting down to interrogate the patients of this asylum because they're asking questions about a particular patient who seemed to have escaped. And so they're just trying to gather information. And we get to one character who they're interrogating, and she seems very uh, nervous. Uh, shall we say, and she asked for a glass of water, and so Mark Ruffalo gets up to get her a glass of water, and he comes back, and he sets it down on the table, and now that I think about it, too, was there any water in the glass? I think so, yeah. You think there? Okay. I'm pretty sure. I, I, I couldn't quite tell if there's water in the glass, but... My confusion on this will make more sense as I explain the scene. <laughs> so it, you see the table, and then you see Mark Ruffalo's hand come in with the glass and set it down. And then it cuts to... Um, and then you see her pick it up with... Uh, it was her left hand, right? Or was it her she right? She picks it up with her right hand. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She yes. picks it up with her right, right hand. hand. Yep. And then it cuts to her face, and she's drinking. She's bringing it to her face and drinking it, yeah. But she's doing it with her left hand, and there's nothing in her hand. And then she sets the glass down. With her left hand. And it, it, We had to rewind that. I'm like, wait, what? She, she put it down with her left hand. And then we rewound it, and then we caught that she's not holding anything. She's just drinking nothing. And it was, like, so quick and so, like fast we're like what the heck this is crazy man but there's tons of little cuts like that through this whole film that are making you it's 100 intentional it's making you question your mind of what you're actually seeing because you're in a stay in asylum because of uh, uh of leonardo's uh, dicaprio's character getting psd as he's here and just trying to figure out this case that they're on and, and it's just really really well done and I want to point out another scene where they're kind of, I think it's after this, they're exploring the forest, kind of meandering and looking for the late missing patient. And they find, and the storm's really bad. Like there's a big storm coming in on the island. They can't leave. They were supposed to leave that day. And so they're bunkered down in this, this not church, but it's kind of like a- A mausoleum. A mausoleum, You're yes. talking about the cemetery scene, right? The cemetery right? scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're inside of a mausoleum to get shelter from the storm. Yeah, and, and they're- they're in there, and there. This is a big exposition dump at this point, and I'm like, oh yeah, it's exposition dump, dump. But these the actors are really great, and the dialogue's just fitting great as well. That it doesn't matter if this is an exposition dump. It's entertaining. It gets you more thinking about what's going on and what what's next, as well as figuring out the mystery. So, you know, I think exposition is. It a lot of people give it crap. Like you can't. You can't when you're writing use an exposition scene and stuff like that. But show have, not tell, show not tell, which is a good rule which to follow. Which is a good rule, totally. But in this but case, in this case, it, it's a tool. Exposition is a tool. You got to use it effectively, mm -hmm. kind of like with a lot of tools of writing. So in this scene, it's just it's like the storm, and also the storm. I noticed in the scene is getting louder and louder in the background as they're talking and they're figuring out stuff, and they're like, "Well, what if the government's after you, man?" Uh, like rough, 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 talking to Leo, and he's like, "What if the government's after you, man? And they're they're making and, and they're making you go, come here, and they're gonna capture you, man. They found you out because he he you know he, he Leo has alternative motives while he's here, and so Mark Ruffalo's kind of playing to that. 
And it's just really an interesting to see. And then just randomly, the in a very evil dead moment, the doors burst wide open on the mausoleum. <laughs> and they're like, what? And this wind and rain and, and snow and, and leaves come into the thing. And then like the cops or whatever find them from the or the guard from the earlier finds them. And they're like, what are you guys doing out here? Get the hell in this vehicle. <laughs> and it's like, it's like very much like, yeah, we can't trust anybody while we're here. It's, it's very, it's a very effective scene too, because like, Sure, it's just exposition, but the way it's delivered builds tension, builds mm-hmm. tension, builds tension. And all of a sudden, this door just bursts <laughs> wide open, and this dude's just like, "Get out of the car! Get out of the car! Get out of the car! What are you guys doing?" And it's just like it totally like it's like, "Whoa, okay, that's okay. a weird way to break tension." Yeah. Um, I also <laughs> wanted to mention in that scene, uh, Mark Ruffalo's line that he delivers is so great. Mm-hmm. The where he's like. He's uh, feeding into uh, DiCaprio's fears, and he's like, "What if while you were looking into them, they were looking into you?" <gasps> it's ah oh, man, I, I it's don't really good. Yeah, it's yeah. so good. Like Mark Ruffalo, like, he's mostly known for like uh, romantic comedies as well as the Marvel movies nowadays. But he's a great actor, man. And wait, is he in The Departed as well? I don't, I'm gonna have to look that up. Let's see. I, I don't think he is, but I would say I, he's a great actor. I, I love Mark Ruffalo. Love me some Mark Ruffalo. He's, he's, he's fan flipping tastic. No, Mark no, Ruffalo. No, it doesn't seem like he's in. I need to see this film. Martin Sheen's in this movie. Anthony Anderson. Oh, David, we gotta watch The Departed next. Anthony Anderson, man, you gotta watch it if Anthony Anderson's in it. I mean, you also have. I know uh, I've seen this movie before. You also have but Jack Nicholson, which is fine. Yeah, I I know I've <laughs> seen. Well, I know I've seen this movie before, but I actually don't remember it. Yeah, like, I, I I'm curious. Um, so yeah, we will have to watch this again yeah, at, some at some point. point this yeah. this is a star studded cast. Oh uh, yeah, everybody's Leo, in this Matt Mark, Damon, Mark, Jack Nicholson, Mark, Mark Wahlberg, in the Martin Sheen, uh, Ray Winstone, Alec Baldwin. Jeez, and of course Anthony Anderson. Oh, and you have another Wahlberg. You got Robert Wahlberg. Oh no, Robert Wahlberg. You you've got the uh, the dangerous. Great Value Wahlberg. Great Value Wahlberg. Wait, oh, man, how many? That's a lot of Wahlbergs, man. Jeez, it's hard to keep track of them. All right, let's get back.